Good day subscribers. Today is part two of the seven part series, how to build a Robinhood auto stock trader in Python. Today, we're gonna to start working on the code. So let's jump in. In part one of this series, we talked about the system that we're going to build in Python to interface with Robinhood based on the trading strategy that you develop. We talked about how this series will be broken up and what will be covered in each video. In this video, we're going to start working on the code and build the first part of the trader, which you can see over here. Before we get started, to interface with Robinhood, you're going to need a Robinhood account. If you haven't created one yet, go to Robinhood and open an account first. At this point, you don't need any money in the account, but if you want to trade stocks later, you will need some money invested at that time. So now let's fire up our favorite IDEs and start working on the code. All right, so now we're looking at my desktop and as you guys can see, I have two files created in my favorite IDE. I use Atom. Um, and over here I have my CMD open so that we can run the program. And I have over here a config.py file and a trader.py file. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go into this config.py file and we are going to let um, the file know our username and password to get into Robinhood. So here I have my username is set to computer guy Chris and my password is set to please subscribe. Um, now this isn't my actual username and password. Um, so you can't actually log into my account, but what you'll want to do here is put your actual username, your actual password, and we're going to call that in the trader.py file, um, and that'll help you to log into Robinhood uh, when we execute the program. So for now, I'm going to close this. I'm going to not save it so it keeps my actual credentials. And now let's move into the trader.py file. So the first thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to pull in our config file. Now let's make that a little bit bigger so that you guys can see. That should be pretty good, a little bit smaller. So we have import config, and now we are going to want to pull in the other libraries we're going to use right now, and that's three of them. We have Robin Stocks, Date Time, and Time. And Robin Stocks is going to be our main API. So before we get into the actual programming, let's take a quick look at the Robin Stocks API, since that's the library that we'll use the most in this program. So if we go over here to Google and we pull up the API, we can see this nice list and it'll give us a list of all the functions. Over here on the left hand side, we have the table of contents, which has the introduction, installing, the quick start, as well as a list of all the functions, which is going to be the most important part for us. Over here in the functions, it gives us the way to utilize that function, as well as all the parameters, a description of the parameters, and what will be returned from each function. So I found this API really easy to use, really easy to understand, and it helped me build the functionality to connect between the program and the Robinhood stock platform. So let's just take a quick look at one of the functions. So here we have a, a buy order. So we have robinstocks.orders.order by market, gives us a list of the parameters, the description of each parameter, and the return. So if you decide to make any changes after following this tutorial, you can just go ahead into this API right here, find whatever type of order you want or any type of change you want to make if you want to do it for crypto or anything like that, and you can just implement those changes. So I'll leave a link to this API in the video description, but for now, let's go back and continue programming. And now we are going to start building our program. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a login function. So here we have def login and we have an attribute days. And so what this login function does is it logs us into Robinhood and it's gonna keep us there for a number of days. And here we have time logged in, we have 60 seconds times 60 minutes times 24 hours and then times the number of days. So this will be, when you log in, you'll have to add a second verification to prove that you're you and this will keep you logged in for whatever number of days you have here. Uh, there is a maximum limit. I don't know what it is, um, but there is a maximum limit. So you can't say like 
300 days or a thousand days uh, eventually it will kick you out and you'll have to really verify yourself but the verification is just a number set into the text that you'll have to punch in over here um, and now we're going to call our RH our Robin stocks library and we're going to do RH dot authentication dot login we're going to pull our username and password from the config file if you wanted, you could actually skip the config file step and just put your actual username and password here. Um, I like doing it this way. I feel it's a little bit more secure and that way if I'm ever recording my screen or showing a friend or anything, um, I know that they won't actually see my real username and password. But if it's just going to be you using it, you can completely skip that step and just add your actual username and password. Um, then we're going to do expires in and to give this time logged in variable that we've created over here. Uh, scope is internal by SMS. That's true. That's going to be the verification code that you'll get on your phone and store session true. So now we have our log in function. What do we have to create now? We got to do a log out function. So this one isn't as needed. Um, we'll put this at the end of our program to log us out, but most of the time we'll log out of the program by just control Cing. Um, and that'll that'll kick us out. So we don't totally need this, but I like having it in there. I feel like it's a fail safe. So now we have login, log out. We need to create our stocks. So here we're going to create a function called get stocks. And it is going to create this list called stocks and then append a bunch of ticker symbols that we're going to add to the list and then return that list. Um, now here I've used INPX, HHT, and CNET. Now these are just three stocks that I found that were all pretty cheap um, and I wanted to watch just for this video. You can really use whatever stocks you want. If you want your trader to trade Tesla and Apple, you could put Tesla and Apple over here. Um, whatever stocks you want to use, these were just the three that I chose because they were all under $2, I think. Um, and so that's, that's what we'll be using for our example, but you could use whatever you like. So now that we have these three, we need one more function before we get into the meat of things, and that is an open markets function. So the open market function is gonna tell us when the market is open, when we're able to trade, and when the market is closed, and we are not able to trade. So when you call this function, it initially sets market to false. Uh, time now, it's gonna call that date time library that we had up there, that we have up here, this date time library. Um, and set it to now, so that's going to be the current time. So for me, it is 7.30 p.m. Uh, market opens at 9.30 a.m. and the market closes at 4 p.m., so I said 3.59 p.m. And then we just have this simple logic over here. If time now is greater than market open and less than market close, then the market is true, meaning the market is open. So at this time, since it's 7.30 p.m., the market is not open. So if we try to run it, uh, open market, we are going to get that the market is closed. So let's show that. Market is closed. So that's kind of what we expected. So for this example, since it's, uh, it's after the market is closed, I am going to change this to true, making the market always quote unquote open and make this pass so it doesn't print out this statement all the time. But um, in when, I, when you're actually running this program, you'll only be able to trade within these hours, so you'll have to leave this as false and leave this um, to print out the statement if it's not. So now that we've got our four functions, we have our login function, our logout function, our get stocks function, and our market open function, we can start building the actual program that'll execute these functions and check out our stock prices on Robinhood. And so to start that off, I'm going to put in this if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals underscore underscore main underscore underscore. Then we're going to execute this this uh, this code right here. Um, for anybody who is new to Python, all this is saying is when you run a Python program, a Python file from the actual file, this attribute gets set automatically. So you have uh, underscore, underscore, name, underscore, underscore, equals, underscore, underscore, main, underscore, underscore. Um, but if you're calling a file from another file, so here we're calling config from our trader file, um, then it would not execute this line of code. So all it does is make sure that you're running the actual file 
It's definitely not needed, but I like to add it to my program, so you're free to add it or not add it if you want. Um, but let's just say print I'm right here. And so if we run that, we should get I'm right here. Great. So now we're running in this section of code. So first, we should log in. So we're going to log into Robinhood. We're going to set days equal to one. So we're going to be logged in for one day. And let's get our stocks from our stocks function. And just to see it, let's print out our stocks. So here we have stocks, INPX, HHT, and CNET. Now, one thing that you didn't see on this screen, but you will see on your screen the first time that you log in, is uh, it'll ask you to authenticate your, your login. You'll get a text message with a bunch of numbers on it. You'll just have to punch in those numbers, press enter, and it'll log you in. Um, you won't have to do it every time. You'll just have to do it for every time you get logged out, which for me right now is one day. So, now that we have our stocks, we know that that's going through and we're getting logged into Robinhood. We should check if the market is open. So we're going to do while market is open. And since we set market open to true, so we're considering the market to always be open, um, this line of code is going to execute even though we're not within this time frame. Um, when I change this back to false, when I'm actually running the program, um, this would only execute within the market hours, but for now, just to show you guys, I'm going to keep it as always running. Um, and let's do print. Let's make some money. All right. And we get what we expected. It just runs let's make some money over and over and over again. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to check the prices of our stocks. So we're going to assume the market is open. We're going to pretend that it's open. Right now, it's just going to read the closing prices since we're after market hours. But we have prices equals to RH, which are, is our Robin Stocks API, dot stocks, dot get latest price. And then we feed it our line of stocks. So if we do print, uh, Prices, prices. We're going to get the prices, and just so it doesn't shoot out a thousand printing of the prices, we're going to add in this time dot sleep for 30 seconds. So let's run that. Let's save it. Save it. And run it. So we have our stocks printed out, and then the closing price for each stock is printed out. And if we wait a little bit of time, it's going to sleep for 30 seconds, and then it's going to run it again. So we'll see that coming up pretty soon. And there we can see the second printing. So I cut the video to uh, not waste all of your time, but you can see it prints out the uh, the latest price every 30 seconds. So let's control C out of it and clear it. So now we have um, the main meat of our program. We're gonna log into Robinhood. We're gonna pull the stocks from our get stocks function. We're gonna print out those stocks so we know that what they are. And while the market is open, which right now we're saying the market is always open, we're gonna get the prices for our list of stocks and we're gonna print those prices out. So pretty good so far. Um, the last thing I want to do in this video is just start breaking down this list of prices and list of stocks. And we're going to do that by creating a for loop. So we're going to have for i and stocks in enumerate stocks. For anybody who's never used enumerate before, all it does is it takes a list and it counts as you go through the list. So it'll say if you have, let's say, a list that is a, b, c. It'll say A1, B2, and C3. 
And so that's what the I is here. So I will be that number one, two, or three, and stocks would be the, the stocks that we're adding in the list, or in my example before, it would be A, B, and C. So here, we're going to say price is the float of prices, which is this list up here, and the I step in that list. Um, so this is going to give out the number in that list. We're going to convert it to a float because prices are going to be floats. Um, and then we're going to print out the stock name and the stock price using a dot format. This is, again, just a different, for anybody who's new to Python, this is just a different way to, uh, to write out your print statements. If you use these curly braces and then dot format, you can add your... Um, variables down here and it'll print them out and kind of fill them in. So stocks goes right here to this first set of curly braces and price goes here to the second set of curly braces. Um, and then it ends and it goes into this time sleep. Uh, last thing, let's just add a logout so that we're using all of our functions today. And let's run that. So we're gonna come up here, we're gonna run pytrader.py and here it goes. So it first prints out our stocks, INPX, HHT, and CNET. And then it goes through each individual stock and prints out their price just the same as we put it out right here. And if I cut the video and redo it in 30 seconds, you guys will see that it'll print out the next set. And there we go. Now we can see the second set. So it's the same price because we're in closed hours. So the prices aren't changing, but you can see it'll print out the next set every 30 seconds. So that's gonna be it for the first video. Uh, let's just do a quick review. We have our four functions. We have our uh, import config, and then our three libraries that we're bringing in. Our four functions, uh, login, logout, get stocks, and open market, which we set to constantly true. And then we have the meat of our program, which is going to log into Robinhood, then it's going to get the stocks from our get stock function, check if the market's open, get the prices using the Robin Stocks API, and then it's going to loop through each stock and get the price for that stock and print it out. So that's going to be it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, if you're excited about this series or have any questions, put them in the comments below. Otherwise, thanks and subscribe.